hello and welcome in this video we are going to learn how to create a simple user registration system using the asv.net framework specifically c sharp okay so it is going to be sort of a web-based application all right yeah so first thing first we have to create our database and from there we can use our front end to interface the database you are going to create so i'm going to use SQL Server Management Studio, it means that I'm using SQL Server, right? Good. So I've already launched my SQL Server Management Studio here, as you can see. So I'm just going to expand the databases here, right? And what I'm going to do is right click on the databases and create a new database called. So we are going to give it a simple name. So what is this loading? Okay. So let's say that. We want to give it a name called um maybe user db all right user underscore db like so and then just click on okay after that so this is executed and you can see that the user db has not been added to our databases now within this user database we can go ahead and create what we call entities or tables so let's just say that inside this user database we expand this by clicking on this last icon here and then we can go ahead and right click on these tables and then say new table select table and let's just define the columns that we are going to need so we will need a um, how do you call it let's say a first name middle name last name um perhaps email address password and all that so let's say the first id the first column should be an id which will serve as a unique identifier for all the rules that are going to come into this particular table or all the records that we are going to push in here there should be a unique identifier for all the rules do you get it all right so let's say the first column we want it to be id which is going to be of the data type let's say integer okay so int let me just type int like so and it shouldn't be now the next one we said we want it to be first name first underscore name and this is going to be a varka so 50 is okay it shouldn't allow now so uncheck this the next one we want it to be let's say middle name middle underscore name and this is also going to be a varkar 50 shouldn't be now and then last name which is also going to be a varkar 50 but in the middle name let's give it a now okay and then uncheck this because not everybody has um, a middle name all right okay so we have id first name middle name last name and let's say we want email all right email it's going to be a varka so let's change the length to maybe a hundred like so and then let's say that um we also want gender gender okay gender and this is going to be let's say character and instead of 10 let's say we want eight characters okay and it shouldn't be now and okay so let's also say we want a password field or something okay all right so let's just add username okay let's just add username so username and this is going to be a varka 50 and this shouldn't be now now that we've actually defined the columns and their constraints their data types let's set this first id here to be the primary key so all we're going to do is just right click on it and then you see an option like set primary key just select that you see now there is a key that is associated with this column and whatever column you select there are corresponding properties down here okay so when you come here we're going to look for something called 
identity specification this one here now let's expand it and we select its identity by default it is no let's change it to yes all right and then identity increment should be one and the seed should be also one that means that whenever we add a record into the database or this table it will start counting or indexing this id field here or column here from one okay and then it will increment it by one so the next record becomes two the next one becomes three like that automatically without us having to actually specify it all right so that is the essence so once we are through with this let's just save this one here save and then say users underscore tv so that is the name of the table we want to assign to this particular table here oh yes then just hit ok all right so we are true with the table so let's just expand these tables here and as you can see we are now having this dbo.users underscore tb table here so when i right click on this and say maybe select top 1000 rows you're going to see that this table will return an empty result okay there is nothing there's no record currently inside this table is that okay all right so now let's go into um our visual studio application and then design the front end that we can use to interface this particular table all right so i have already launched my visual studio i'm using 2019 all right so whichever version you are using i think you can pretty follow along like that so i'm just going to say create new project from here and then i'll search for let me just filter by these options here i want c sharp and then the platform is going to be a web uh, let's say web web i can't really see web okay let's see all platforms and then i'll choose um choose web from the project side web okay now i would have to search for asp.net web application into brackets.net framework this one here that is what we are interested in so having selected that let's go ahead and click next and then we are going to give this project a name so let me say the name should be um let's say user registration system all right now all other options let's leave it to the default and then just hit on create let's hit on create and wait patiently for our project to get us to a point where we can say okay we want an empty web form we don't want to select this option neither this now that let's just select the first option which is the empty so we can do everything from scratch all by ourselves make sure you don't check any of these things and then just hit create finally and in some few minutes or seconds time our project should have been created successfully for us okay so this is taking a bit longer than usual hopefully it will be created successfully for us okay okay all right so this is what we have now 
very basic and an empty project we just created is that okay all right so i'm pretty sure that you are very familiar with this interface here okay now i'm using a duck team okay i'm using a duck team and that's how come my interface is looking a bit different so if your slides your your interface might look a bit different so just take note of that so we don't we are not interested in the welcome page or the overview page let's just close this one and on my right hand side here i have what we call the solution explorer i have decided to dock or position this windows here like that okay so this is a solution explorer window and these are my properties window all right so in the solution explorer window let's go ahead and add one form right click on the project name okay the user registration system not the solution itself this one here and then say add so when you select the add you're going to get sub option just select web form and let's name this one registration registration and just hit ok the form will be added to our solution or our project and we can start working on it yes so you can see that we now have this registration.asbx here this one here okay now when you create a form or a web form we have three modes that you can work with we have the design view which looks like so we have the design view which looks like so see where you can drag and drop your controls like that onto it and then we also have the source mode where you can do everything from the source here now whenever you drag a control and drop it on the form like so it is actually creating a source code here for you can you see that good so you can use the design mode to achieve whatever you want or you can use a source mode also to achieve a desired outcome and their last mode is the split mode which is going to actually give you the design view and also the source view i'm not interested in this let's just use the source I'm gonna stick to the source here okay and we can just box on like that so in the source view let me expand this increase the size a little so we can see it better now you see that there is an opening form tag and a closing form tag in that we have an opening div and a closing div so inside this opening and closing div let's first of all say that we want a label okay we want a label so let me search a label from my toolbox here and then just drag it and drop it this label i'm going to change it to let's say first name all right first name like so and just beside the label i'm going to drop what we call a text box like so okay and this text box i'm going to give it an id called txt first name like that so you can go into the design view to see what you just did by just clicking on the design tab and you can see this is what we are having right good let me go back to the source now we have our first name let's just duplicate this one here to have our middle name so just paste it and then let's change this one to middle name and let's say we want to change the id for this one to txt middle name like that go back to the design view and this is what you are saying now let me just put a break tag before this one br like so and see what it creates yes so i think i'm kind of okay with this and let's move on to create for 
create a control for our last name copy and then paste this one like so okay and then change this one to the text property of the label to last name and then the id will be txt last name like that we we'll go ahead and paste once more so after the last name we were having email gender and username so email so let's say that this one will be email email then this one will be email and then we'll have gender now the gender let's use let's use um so let me drop a label first okay for the let me introduce my break tag here like that and the label let's change it to gender and we are going to use what we call let's say drop down list for the gender okay so let me just change the ID of this one to gender like that. All right. And lastly, we have our username field. So, so, so let me just change this one to username and the name of the input field or the text box to username like that and let's just go and see what we've done yes as you can see this is what we have as of now now let's add a button that we have to click on to actually submit our form for us so here create one more br tag and then just after that let me go ahead and search for the button and then drop it beneath it like that and change the id of this one to btn register and then the text that will display on the button to register so and when we should go ahead and view this you can see that we're having our button here all right let me add one more of the break tags to create a bit of space i think so this is okay for me now let's go back to the design view and do one more thing this gender field here let's click on it and then select this drop down list text this small arrow and then go to edit items click on edit items here you can add two items click on add here to add two list items now the first one we want the text to be male right and then the value should also be male like that and for the second list item let's say that we want the text to be female and the value should also be female and then click on ok after that all right good so what i'm going to do is let me right click on this page and set it as a default or the startup page like so and then let's run a project let me change my browser to a more preferred browser so i'm not interested in this okay opera let me select opera and then let me click on start or debug so that we see what we've done so far So normally when you're debugging for the first time it takes a bit of time so kindly exercise patience okay so it is loading hopefully we'll see an output it is loading hopefully we're going to see an output
all right so hopefully it is going to show us what we've done still processing so you can see from the url that we have the file name registration.aspx and that is the file extension for asp.net projects that we created okay all right now this is our form that we actually designed you could see that there is no much spaces in there so let's do one thing let me just close this one here let's go to the source view and then just on top of this div let me add one h1 tag and say that registration let's say registration system and then create a break tag after that let me add one more of the break tag like so and for this let me duplicate the break tags yeah so let's go to the design view and see what we've done so far you see that there is a bit of spaces in there okay so this is quite okay and we can run the application again see the output all right so you could see that at least we have some spaces in there that we can work with right good okay now let's start to process the back end code for this form to be able to interact with the users table that we created all right so now what we're going to do is i'm going to double click on this register button here double click on it and it is going to assign what we call the click events here and this is actually a c sharp code base and this is where we are going to process whatever logics we need in order to be able to talk to our database all right good before then we need to grab our connection string there should be a connection string that we can leverage to be able to connect to the specific database that we want so i'm going to make use of one tool called sql data source just drag it and drop it on the form so once you drop it just on the sql data source task okay this small r when you click on it it's going to expand that just select configure data source configure data source and then create new connection by selecting this option here and we are working with microsoft sql server so let's just select this one and then say continue so once you are here we are going to refresh the server here refresh it refresh it click on refresh and this is going to load all the servers that we have currently installed on the machine or the computer so when i drop down this okay so i didn't get my servers well okay so what we are going to do is let me go back to let me go back to my management studio and then click on this database engine here all right and i'm going to copy the server name all right so when i copy the server name go back to the application cancel this delete this option here double click on this 
and then what i'm going to do is on top of this form load event here just in the partial class here i'm going to say string i say connection string or const string like so equals to then have what we call data source data source so equals then i'll paste whatever i copied here like that then i would have to specify my machine name okay so let's just say that the username we have here is code lab academy and then wait more one more minute let me just do something here see databases so the username that is currently here is so let's say code lip so code deep hyphen academy like so what is last cmount cmount technologies so make sure this one is a double backward slash and then the next thing will be initial catalog initial catalog which is the name of our database let's say users underscore db and let's say integrated security integrated security equals to true like that then we can actually terminate this one all right now let's import some few namespaces here so we are going to say using system dot data dot sql client then we be using system dot data like so now that we are true let's come here and establish our connection so we are going to say that sql connection like so then we create an instance of this by saying con equals new sql connection now this is going to take the connection string that we specified at the top connection string like so and we can say that using using con okay using con can say now open con dot open like so so now that we've been able to open this connection let's say that so what i'm going to do is let me use an if condition to test this okay so that is now actually working so let's just say con dot open right con dot open terminated then i can say that response dot write scripts so this is going to take a script stack and then inside the script tag here let's say alert And we connect it and then just return so let me run this code again and see what we have done so far
all right so when i click on this i expect to get a message good so we are having a problem you're having an issue okay so it's saying that keyword not supported initial catalog so initial catalog okay so let's see what we are not doing right this is also not okay so let me see run the code again Okay, so it is loading. So when I click on register, I expect to get a message. So it is still loading. Let's wait for it to finish loading and see what it tells us. Okay. All right, so I don't know why it is keeping longer. Let me just um okay, okay, it has given us a problem. We didn't actually see that. Okay. So let me run it again. Yeah, so these are some of the problems or issues you're going to run to run into whenever you are doing stuff like so so you just have to know your way around it whatever you are doing you need to be very very careful so when i hit on register our code breaks in the background i think so let me go back Yeah, so it's saying that a network related or instance specific error occurred whilst establishing a connection. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm making a typo here, or perhaps a duplicate of the username. So let me just get rid of this one. Okay, and then run the code again. If it doesn't work, I'm going to take off the Zimo technology because when we look at the very instance that we have in our SQL management studio, it was just the Codelib Academy. So this is loading. So when I hit on register. Okay, so it's obvious that there will be a problem so let's go back to the code and as you can see the same error message so what i'm going to do is let me just take off this part here like so and then leave all these ones intact run the code again 
so when a connection is established you are supposed to get a positive message all right supposed to get this message saying connected All right, so let me hit on register again. And what is it saying this time around? It's saying that there was a timeout when trying to establish. Oh, okay. okay okay so let's me actually look through this thing very well connection string so let's say data source we have this so let me go back to this one here and say database engine copy exactly what is here okay come and paste it terminated then the initial catalog we have it to be the users database oh, okay i named it user db all right user db my bad so user underscore db like so so let me run the code again i believe this time around it should work this time around it should definitely work it should definitely work so when i hit on register yes you see that we've gotten a positive message saying connected good i said it should definitely work all right so let's close this so these are some of the things you need to be very mindful of whenever you are working with things of this nature right yes okay now we've established our connection and our connection is opened we need to go ahead and actually um perform our logics to be able to insert the data into the table so first of all let me do some few checks so i'm gonna say that if txt first name dot text equals to empty all right or txt middle name dot text equals to empty so it's supposed to be double equals here and i'll say or txt last name dot text equals to empty like so then i think the fields are more than that right so yeah so first the middle name last name email you also have to have the email so let me go and say that or email that's text goes to empty all right and then the username lastly or username txt i think txt username i didn't give it a name so let's go back and say that we select this part here go to the source view so the id was just username all right so or username dot text equals to empty like so then we can just prompt the user that one or more fields required like so and then we can just return 
before then let's say con dot close like so and then just return okay else so we can we can do so many validation checking whether the entered email is actually an email a valid one we can check the length of the characters and all that's that we want and all that but here i'm just only checking for the emptiness so wherever so you just click on the register i'm checking if there is a value here there is a value here there is a value here and all that so in the absence of that it is going to throw this message all right so we can go ahead and do other validations as well this is just a layer okay else what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that sql command cmd that is an instance of the sql command say new sql command open bracket and this is going to take a query so we're going to say inserts into the users underscore tv so we're going to insert what we call the first name first underscore name these are the column names in the table right middle name middle underscore name middle underscore name comma last underscore name and then email gender and then username email email comma gender and then username then after we've specified that we need to say values outside it, values like so then we open brackets like so now we are going to use what we call parameterized query so we need to provide placeholders for these columns here so the first one let's say at f name at m name middle name at l name um at email at gender and then at let's say you name like so then after that here after the double quotes comma then this is going to take the connection instance that we created okay so now that we've, we are through with that we need to say that whatever we want to send into the table these are now the actual values you want these are parameters so we need now to now specify the actual values that will go with these parameters uh, with regards to the various columns that we have here so i'll say that cmd dot parameters dot add with value then we need to call our placeholders the first one was as first name now comma and then say txt first name dot text all right like so and we do same for the same for our middle name m name comma and then txt middle name dot text so cmd dot parameters dot add with value and we say at l name comma txt last name dot text then we move on to look at the think after the last name there is email gender email so at at email say email like so and then gender mm -hmm. gender like so and the last one which is the username parameters that add with value so i say you name give it parameter called you name say username like so and then we can go ahead and then execute this command so i'll say int maybe i equals to cmd dot execute execute non query this one here now say if i is greater than zero 
okay if i is greater than zero then let me just come and then print this simple message and say user or let me say registration successful and then just after that i can close the connection very important and then i can return from this particular function or click event all right so else if it is not so just after the closing bracket of this if here let's just say else then you open another curly bracket else copy all this and then just paste it and say that registration not successful all right so we don't need this here again all right so now let's go ahead and test our program Let's test it. It's loading. All right, so first of all, let's test it without entering any data okay so one or more fields required good okay now i think let me go back and verify something close this one so for the agenda we need to grab the text value so dot text here and then for the email too we need to grab the text value like so and then the username we need to grab the text value so that's my bad and also yes so we are good to go let's run the program again so if you don't get the text value like that it is going to insert an empty record into the database or the table yes so that that's why we need to grab the text value of the username field and the gender the email and all the other fields as well so let me click on register and we expect to get one or more fields required all right so let me test it and just enter first name let's say Ernest middle name Kweku and then last name and then my email let's say e at gmail.com I'm a mail let me leave it to default and my username I just want to say ekt ekt20 let me say code lip academy that's my username so when i hit on register say registration successful and that is the message we are getting so when i hit on okay okay we need to clear the fields after the registration is successful but i'm not going to do that yet let's go into a database and verify so currently we can see that there's nothing but then when i select the table here again and say select top 1000 rows when you see that we have a record here like that yes we have a record yes and that is pretty how to go about this um it's it has been quite a lengthy video yes i understand that but it is better off to really see what happens under the hood than to just obscure certain things for you to have the final result now like i said 
whatever issues that we encountered during the process those are some of the things you're going to be experiencing so you need to be very aware of them and how to um, find your way whenever you bump into such scenario or situations yes i hope you like this one um let me know your thoughts in the comment section yes let me know your thoughts don't forget to like the video and also if not subscribe to the channel and you would want to be notified whenever i upload the content on this channel just go ahead and subscribe to the feed i mean subscribe to the channel yes and also like the video once again let me know your thoughts in the comments you are highly welcomed and much appreciated thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the in another one